Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that's both fascinating and a little bit terrifying, flesh-eating bacteria. What exactly are these bacteria? How do they attack our bodies? And most importantly, how can we protect ourselves? Stick around to find out. What is flesh-eating bacteria? The term, flesh-eating bacteria, is actually a bit of a misnomer. These bacteria don't literally eat flesh. Instead, they produce toxins that destroy the skin, fat, and tissue covering the muscles. The medical term for this condition is necrotizing fasciitis. Common types include group A streptococcus, Vibrio vulnificus, Clostridium perfringens, and Staphylococcus aureus. Infection typically starts with a break in the skin, such as a cut or scrape, and can quickly become life-threatening without prompt medical treatment. How human get infected by flesh-eating bacteria? Cuts and scrapes. Minor injuries such as cuts, scrapes, or abrasions can provide an entry point for the bacteria. Surgical wounds. Post-surgical wounds, especially if not properly cared for, can become infected. Insect bites. Bites from insects like mosquitoes or spiders can introduce bacteria into the skin. Burns. Burns, especially severe ones, can be susceptible to infection. Puncture wounds. Injuries from sharp objects like nails or animal bites can also allow bacteria to enter. Chronic skin conditions. Conditions like eczema or psoriasis, which cause breaks in the skin, can be risk factors. Contaminated water. Swimming in or coming into contact with contaminated water, especially if you have an open wound, can lead to infection. How flesh-eating bacteria cause infection in human being. Entry into the body. The bacteria enter the body through a break in the skin. This can be a cut, scrape, surgical wound, insect bite, burn, puncture wound, or any other type of skin injury. Rapid multiplication. Once inside, the bacteria quickly multiply at the site of entry. This rapid growth is facilitated by the bacteria's ability to evade the immune system and thrive in the human body. Release of toxins. The bacteria produce toxins and enzymes that destroy the surrounding tissues. These toxins break down tissues and cells, leading to the death of the affected area. The destruction of tissue causes severe pain and inflammation. Impairment of blood flow. The toxins also damage blood vessels, which impairs blood flow to the infected area. This lack of blood flow prevents the delivery of immune cells and antibiotics, making it difficult for the body to fight off the infection. Spread of infection. The infection spreads rapidly along the fascial planes, the connective tissue that surrounds muscles, nerves, and blood vessels. The bacteria can move quickly through these planes, leading to widespread tissue damage in a short period. Systemic symptoms. As the infection progresses, it can cause systemic symptoms such as fever, chills, fatigue, and a general feeling of illness. If not treated promptly, the infection can lead to sepsis, a life-threatening condition where the body's response to infection causes widespread inflammation and organ failure. Necrosis and tissue death. The term, necrotizing, refers to the death of tissues. As the infection continues, large areas of skin, fat, and muscle tissue die. This necrosis can lead to severe disfigurement and, in extreme cases, the need for removal of the affected limb. Potential for fatality. Without prompt and aggressive treatment, necrotizing fasciitis can be fatal. The toxins produced by the bacteria can cause a systemic inflammatory response, leading to septic shock and multi-organ failure. What are the symptoms of flesh-eating bacterial infection? Severe pain. Intense pain at the infection site, often more severe than the wound appears. Redness and swelling. Rapidly spreading redness and swelling around the affected area. Blisters or ulcers. Development of blisters, ulcers, or dark spots on the skin. Discoloration. Skin may turn dark red, purple, or black as the infection progresses. Fever and chills. High fever and chills as the body reacts to the infection. Fatigue and weakness. General feeling of being unwell, fatigue, and weakness. Nausea and vomiting. Possible nausea and vomiting. Rapid heart rate. Increased heart rate, tachycardia. Low blood pressure. Blood pressure may drop, leading to shock. Confusion. Severe cases may cause confusion or disorientation. How to diagnose flesh-eating bacterial infection. Clinical evaluation. Doctors assess symptoms such as severe pain, rapidly spreading redness, swelling, and systemic signs like fever. Laboratory tests. Blood tests check for signs of infection and inflammation, and cultures identify the causative bacteria. Imaging studies. X-rays. 
CT scans, or MRIs reveal tissue damage, gas in tissues, and the extent of the infection. Surgical exploration. Direct observation during surgery can confirm the diagnosis and determine the extent of tissue necrosis. Biopsy. Tissue samples are examined to identify the bacteria and confirm necrotizing fasciitis. What is treatment for infection caused by flesh-eating bacteria? Immediate medical attention. Early diagnosis and prompt hospitalization are crucial. Antibiotic therapy. High doses of broad-spectrum intravenous antibiotics are initially given, followed by targeted antibiotics once the specific bacteria are identified. Surgical intervention. Multiple surgeries to remove dead and infected tissue, debridement, are often necessary, and in severe cases, amputation may be required. Supportive care. Intensive care, fluid and electrolyte management, and pain relief are essential. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy, HBOT. This may be used to enhance healing and oxygen delivery to affected tissues. Wound care and reconstruction. Ongoing wound care and reconstructive surgery, such as skin grafts, are needed to repair damaged tissues. Monitoring and follow-up. Continuous monitoring and long-term follow-up care are important for recovery and rehabilitation. How to prevent flesh-eating bacterial infection. Good wound care. Clean and cover any cuts, scrapes, or wounds promptly with sterile bandages. Keep wounds clean by washing them with soap and water. Prompt medical attention. Seek medical care for any wound that appears infected or is not healing properly. Monitor wounds closely for signs of infection, such as increasing redness, swelling, or drainage. Protective measures. Wear appropriate protective gear, gloves, long sleeves, etc. when working with sharp objects or in environments where injury is likely. Avoid contaminated water. Avoid swimming in lakes, rivers, or oceans if you have open wounds or cuts, especially in areas where bacterial infections are known to occur. Maintain overall health. Manage chronic conditions like diabetes to reduce susceptibility to infections. Follow a healthy lifestyle with proper nutrition and regular exercise to support immune function. Awareness and education. Educate yourself and others about the symptoms of necrotizing fasciitis and the importance of early medical intervention. Stay informed about local health advisories regarding bacterial infections. Conclusion. While flesh-eating bacteria sound scary, the good news is that they are rare. By taking simple precautions and being aware of the signs, you can significantly reduce your risk. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative content. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.